Roxo Media House. From the Flying Tea Club Studios at Roxo Media House, this is Frogs Today. On this edition of Frogs Today, we dive deeper into the new offensive coordinator hire at TCU. Jamie Plunkett gives an update on TCU baseball. But first, we talk TCU basketball with a tough one at West Virginia. Here to run it down, the voice of the Horn Frogs, Brian Estridge. Welcome into the Friday edition of Frogs today. We're going to spend the entire day in the library here of the Flying Tea Club Studios. We've got a big lineup for you. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about Kendall Bryles, the new offensive coordinator for the Horn Frogs. I've got something to say about that here in just a second. Mac Engel is going to be by along with uh, Coach David Bowden, uh, get the TCU perspective on the hire. Also, we'll go down to Waco, get some history there uh, with our friends at 365 Sports. Sikkim 365 down there as David Smoke and Paul Catalina will join us. Jamie Plunkett's going to come by a little bit later on uh, that D1 baseball preseason poll is out. I think you're going to like where the uh, Horn Frogs sit. Uh, but uh, first, so uh, let's talk a little TCU basketball with the Horn Frogs on the road midweek, of course, on Wednesday night in Morgantown, taking on well, yeah, West Virginia again. Uh, this is a team the Horn Frogs have never beaten in Morgantown. Bob Huggins' team looking for their first conference victory of the year. And they got it, a nine-point win over the Horn Frogs in this one. TCU struggled rebounding. In fact, out-rebounded by double digits in this ballgame. Jamie Dixon was not happy post-game. Uh, Mike Miles uh, put up another 20-plus point effort, but he was really it offensively uh, for TCU. Early foul trouble for both Miles and Damian Baugh got the offense uh, real out of sorts. And then Eddie Lampkin fouls out late. You didn't have him down the stretch. Frogs trail by as many as 18. We're able to scramble back to get it to two but just ran out of gas in the end. Coach Jamie Dixon, in his own words, post game from WVU Coliseum right now. Uh, on the win, uh, certainly I thought we would play better. Uh, we prepared for physicality, but uh, just did not uh, have prepared well enough, obviously. Um, but I was proud of our guys. We talked uh, in, in the huddle throughout about we were going to get back in this game, we were going to chip away, and, and that's what we did. We got it to two, uh, but um, didn't finish it off as far so. You know, certainly the rebounding stands out, uh, those numbers. You know, certainly uh, a lot of factors uh, early in the game that caused the uh, situation, obvious ones. But, um, um, you know, we got we to play better. We got to play better against physical teams. We got to take teams against aggressive, aggressive teams. Uh, certainly the most physical, aggressive team we've played this year. And um, uh, they won that battle. So, uh, you know, congratulations to them. Uh, we've got to respond and come back. We've got a quick one uh, going here Saturday against Kansas. And uh, we'll head there uh, tonight. So, um, but, um, you know, uh, congratulations to uh, uh, West Virginia on the win. Frogs are back in action coming up on Saturday midday. TCU will take on Kansas. The Jayhawks, yes, it's a, another place that TCU has never won as we'll head off to Kansas to take on uh, well, one of the better teams in the country. No question about that. Uh, before we get into our guests, including coming up next, our friends with uh, 365 Sports, uh, my thoughts on the Kendall Browns hire. Uh, a lot goes into this decision, obviously, both uh, from TCU's perspective and my opinion here on uh, what I'm going to give you now in this commentary. A lot of thought went into it. I've got a wife. I've got a daughter. Uh, I know where everyone's coming down on this one. I, I can see it on both sides. But in the end, I've got to trust Sonny Dykes, and I've got to trust Jeremiah Donati, and I've got to trust uh, Victor Boschini. Uh, they have earned that trust, obviously, with the job that they've done here over the last 14 months. And I think it's, uh, you know, I'm also one of those guys that believes in second chances and redemption and showing a little grace. I'm going to do that here with Kendall Browns. Look forward to working with the new offensive coordinator of the Horned Frogs when he arrives on campus. We'll dive deeper into that, including the perspective from Waco. When we join our friends from Sikkim 365 Sports, they come up next here as we continue with Frogs Today after this time. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student-athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student-athletes through a series of unique event-based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club 
or online at flyingteaclub.com. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best-tasting, sugar-free kids' drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. Welcome back into Frogs today. Brian Estridge here in the Flying Tea Club studios. And we are joined right now from our friends in Waco at 365 Sports. They're joining us to talk a little Kendall Bryles right now. Fellas, we're kind of, we're on in your place. You're on in our place. This is, this is, how, we're, this is how technology works today, fellas. Well, this is, and it's uh, it's the new deal. And Brian, as you know, you've been in our studio. We can't wait to get back up sometime in Fort Worth when it's not minus nine degrees for a bowl <laughs> game, and uh, and get to see what you're doing. But it's it's great that what you're doing, great what we're doing. The growth is incredible, and people love college football. And now all of a sudden they love it a little bit more, at least here in Fort Worth after what happened last year with a run for the national championship for, for TCU. Then they lose the offensive coordinator, Garrett Riley. I know we both kind of wanted to share stories here as to the next move, what at least what it appears to be. All is said and done here in Fort Worth, according to everyone, that, well, Kendall Bryles, now the offensive coordinator in Fort Worth. Who would have ever thought that a Bryles would be working for TCU? Gary Patterson. <laughs> Yeah, right. You think? Uh, yeah, he's rolling over somewhere, isn't he? Hey, tell us, because I'm going to give you the, the TCU's perspective here in a second. But uh, give me your take on Kendall, both David and Paul. I want to hear what you guys say about your dealings with him and everything that came down when when uh, when uh, they had to depart and separate eventually. But what was what was day-to-day like with Kendall Bryles? I, I think day-to-day, I mean, look – until everything went down. I mean, so the first few years, uh, Kendall was, was, was great, very accessible and, and, and all, all of that. Uh, he's a, he was, especially at that time, he was one of the most, uh, sought after young and upcoming coaches. You know, you could really see that potential as he, you know, was, uh, wide receivers, running backs coach and kind of moved up the ladder eventually to be the offensive coordinator. Once Philip Montgomery, uh, left to go to Tulsa. And then he was the guy who came up with, uh, the wild bear offense that they ran, uh, in the camping world bowl, or I think that's what it is now. I can't remember what it was <laughs> called then in Orlando when they just ran rough shot through Larry Fedora in North Carolina and didn't have a quarterback because they'd all been injured. He came up with the whole game plan, the way to work it out. He developed that for a team that, uh, and actually had come up with it at halftime of the Texas game the week before, but they'd never practiced it. So by the fourth quarter, it was kind of working. It was just too, too late in the game to really be as effective as they needed to be. So he has innovation. He's done a lot of things. Look, going down the line, even outside of that, um, look, he discovered Jordan Travis uh, that's now at Florida State and winning there. He has made K.J. Jefferson into a very viable SEC quarterback. So the positives are all there. Now, um, people's opinions on the controversy and Kendall's role in it will vary. But uh, as a coach on the field, I – I think they've made a pretty darn good hire based on his resume. Well, yeah, and 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 again, Florida State's big boy school, Arkansas SEC, and, and along the way, and I think early on after everything went down with the scandal and his father Art being fired, you know, F, FAU was probably the perfect landing spot as he kind of slowly worked himself out. Houston, of course, uh, he can coach. We know that it's in his blood. It's also in his mind, uh, and. Uh, Kendall was always good to me, and, and and all of the assistant coaches were, and, and we can go back to that time uh, in many different ways. You know, once all hell broke loose in May of 2016, the uh, the assistant coaching staff, as you could imagine, they pretty much they pretty much shut out everybody. Yeah. And and Phil Phil Bennett even mentioned when he met with Jim Grobe, who was the inter, uh, interim coach, he said, "Listen, we think it's healthy." One, that you have one voice here, and it can be you. And, and Phil Bennett could have been that voice, which would have been, by the way, greatness. Um, and, and a lot of guys got mad. A lot of them did get mad. A lot of them were mad. Well, you know, you have a son-in-law. You have a, a son. Right. You have all of those connections, no matter what anyone may think. So you can imagine how upset people were. And there were times when, uh, yeah, there was a little bit uncomfortable and awkward with, if I saw one of them or two. And eventually all of that kind of just took care of itself once the season ended and they started adding 
jobs and resumes and elsewhere where they were, no matter where they went around the country. Kendall was always good to me. It all just depends on how you want to look at the situation. I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, you know, you in this day and age of social media, Brian, you know, this, you could say one thing, you could make one comment. Everyone wants to go landslide one way or the other. Uh, I, and I said this on our show yesterday, I am surely personally, someone that understands second chances. It happens in life. There are different degrees of that, I understand. But uh, when his name popped up, I got to tell you, I was like, wow, because yeah. it's come full circle in a way with a school that we know was very much heavily involved in in the, the rivalry and also a lot of what might have been being reported or leaked or whatever or what was known about Baylor, what was known about some of the recruiting tactics, et cetera. So that was interesting to me. Here's what um, is I'm trying to put my head around. No one covered that scandal better or more than you guys did uh, from start to finish. You, you've you've read the reports. You've you've talked to the players involved in this. How how deep did it go with Kendall? What did he know? What didn't he know? Will we ever know? Well, I, 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 yeah, we we could discuss the. Four. There's somebody already on the TCU staff in Kaskazadi who's the strength and conditioning coach who was beloved this year right. for TCU at some of the differences and how they finish games might have been a lot of what, a lot of what he's done. Uh, he probably was more involved in discipline of players than anybody else. That's what the strength and conditioning coach does. Uh, I think everybody had some sort of a hand in something, whether it was more about reporting or a, 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 just turning their head, coughing, whatever. I think everybody can take a little bit of responsibility about, perhaps knowing what might not so much details, facts, whatever, but knowing a little bit about what was going on. I think everybody can kind of take a little bit of that. And again, because of how dramatic it happened and because of how it was cut off at the head, so to speak with coach Bryles, um, you know, we really never had a chance. They didn't allow us to have access to the assistants. And maybe that's good too, because no matter what they would have said, they would have been skewered. And, and even sometimes here we are six years later and it's still happening. You yeah, know, my, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. As far as what everybody did or who knows what, or I think that's vague past, you know, the in, instances that we know were police reports or people came and met with coach Bryles about a player I think if you want to look at it as the program as a whole um, and then decide from which point everybody's culpable is the university was ill-equipped to handle it. And most universities actually, as we found in the aftermath, most universities are like it, the, the, the problem was a nationwide thing. Baylor became the flashpoint for it all because it, it kind of all happened there at once with several instances and players getting in trouble back to back to back overall um, coach Bryles just in general was not a guy who had a lot of hardcore discipline that was kind of Kaz Kazadi's job so like you know when you kind of lay it out of who knows who's been in trouble or what's going on the strength coaches wish them the most and look not that Kaz is complicit in anything I'm just saying that everybody kind of knows things in the program and there's gossip I do think there's levels of shielding from the athletic director to the head coach on down the problem was is that the university kind of felt it was incumbent on the football team to do something and the football team felt it was incumbent on the university to do something and a lot of things just got left sitting out there hanging in the void and nobody on either side at any point until Sam Ukuwachu was found guilty ever looked at themselves and said, do we have a problem with this? Yeah, and yeah. that's where it kind of went and, sideways. And Brian, yeah. I'll tell you this as well. And I know you have a lot more you want to say as well is it, it then got to be where it was a feeding frenzy. It was a right. firestorm. And you, you know, this, and I'm sure everybody at TCU who liked the frogs or do like the love, the frogs, mm -hmm. whatever, Probably they they kind of in a in a weird way a, a rivalry way or a hatred way enjoyed that every mm -hmm. damn day sure. on outside the lines being cut ins on on like if a guy made a report that he grabbed his girlfriend in the football parking lot I mean everything I'm not saying any of that was good but it got to a point where there was some embellishing about a lot of facts bottom line one one rape one sexual assault is horrible. But, I mean, attorneys were doing their job because they were defending clients, and also they knew money was involved if they could. Um, there got to be a point where it was such a landslide. We would wake up almost every day. And listen, we did. We, we tried to understand why Sam Ukawachu was not practicing. Mm -hmm. Hell of a player from Boise State. And I always have said this, and Paul, I think Paul agrees with me this. I always wondered 
why in the world they were trying to protect him, I guess, in, in however way you want. And, and maybe they also believe Sam Mukawachu when a lot of coaches believe their players. Listen, we right. all know that too. Um, Baylor was good without him. They played without him. Yeah. I never understood this, Brian, and we want to get back to the Kendall Brown story, but I never understood this. Why in the world did they just not release something that said he has been suspended indefinitely for whatever? Personal reasons, whatever. That We were just told he was working on something. And that I believe me, I promise you, I take responsibility because I didn't dig a little bit deeper. It's not because I didn't want to know. I just thought it was an academic issue. I thought it was a transcript issue. Sure. I thought it was maybe not, you know, skipping class. I never I it in was my weed. Life may have been weed. And eventually I did get one tip right about the same time the story actually came out that he was going to trial. And it was from Newey Scruggs, by the way. Yeah. At, T you know, at, uh, at Channel 5, Newey kind of gave us like, what? I made calls? Nothing happened out of those calls. And then, of course, the next thing you know, the next two, three, four years was absolutely it was. And we were blamed like we were uh, like accomplices <laughs> or whatever, because we didn't know more about what was going on. You know, I, I think Paul made a good point that the, the university expected football to do something. Football expected the university to do something. And somehow, some way in those blurred lines, you know, uh, things things fell through the cracks. And, and that's what it feels like here to me. Now, as it relates to Kendall Bryles and people say, well, now he shows up at TCU. How does the university let that happen? I'm looking at it. Kendall was what, 20? How old was he then? 26, 27 at the time. Now he's what, 40, 40 year old man. I mean, are we talking that big of a distance? Maybe not that much, but still, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a lot different now than I was back then. You know, I'm a lot more mature. Here's the other thing. I don't think that it's fair to hold the sins of the father against the son, you know, and, and, and if, and unless somebody tells me that Kendall was explicitly involved in something, which this, by the way, this university, so they have vetted Kendall, they vetted him harder than they did cause. And they said they vetted cause, you know, to the nth degree, talked to dozens and dozens of people about it. If they vetted him to this point, I think you have to trust that. Don't you trust that process well, and say, listen, we're not going to hold the sins of the father against him. He's also on his, this is the fifth place he's been since right. Baylor. Right. So yeah. uh, four other places have vetted him and not had a problem, especially, look, um, and I don't know what the process is at FAU and FSU and Houston and, and Arkansas, but I would assume that through four different places before you even got to TCU, that in the filter in that process, if there was something egregious enough that one would be more boy that somebody can go and find then they would have said well it's the the juice is not worth a squeeze here right. and done something about it so he's run through a pretty complex filtering process and um for you know you know now seven years you know nobody's caught anything other than yeah he did have uh, an NCAA violation that was a, a recruiting thing, but there are it wasn't a major violation, right? Exactly. And a lot of That's, coaches have those. Yeah, so oh, outside yeah. of that, you know, that is, you know, was long time ago and, and since been resolved. You know, as far as issues go, then no, there's nothing that they could could do so or find. So I mean, I, I think you maybe have to trust in the process and, and just see a little bit with Kendall. Let's be yeah, honest. Here, here's the other thing, David, that I, that I that I have to admire and that is that Kendall Browse is willing to step into this fire that tells me a little bit about his character does it not that hey he knows there's going to be people who are upset at this hire but one he wants to work for Sonny Dykes two he wants to be at TCU apparently uh three that to me shows some confidence in the fact that you're you're not guilty and I hate to use that word but you you, you know where you stand on your own conscience and so you're willing to stand in the fire here at TCU shouldn't I take something from that as well uh, possibly. Yeah. I, I, I say that, that there's a possibility that you're going to go to a place that we all know because of the, uh, the anger, the bitterness, the rivalry of Gary Patterson and Art Bryles, yeah. TCU against Baylor. And there were some bitter games back in those days that you're going to walk in the door of a place that probably fed the animal a little bit yeah. about Baylor, about your, your father, about everybody at Baylor. Uh, there's some hypocrisy here. Craig said it best yesterday or whenever we discussed it the first time. Listen, if they win, nobody will care eventually. Exactly. Uh, it, it, bottom line, the Kaz Kazadi, and, and by the way, we, we had tremendous times. We had interviews with him. And, and obviously with Carlton Buckles, a great classy guy yeah. 
These are great guys. These are great guys. But, I mean, everybody probably has some sort of culpability in some particular way. The the bottom line is, is that in social media, for whatever reason, and, and again, all of what we've discussed of how all this went down is horrible about one rape or any yeah. of them. But the bottom line is, is that it's, it kind of became the poster child of who could be canceled completely. Yes. And we've seen Bobby Petrino hired. We have seen Hugh Freeze hired. Yep. We have seen a lot of people hired. And yet, for whatever reason, he will never be hired again in our browse. And that's what made me think, Brian, and I asked you this in a text when you texted me about Kendall, mm. is I wondered if they were floating out a balloon to see if somebody would shoot it down or pop it. Yeah. Uh, they've done that with art, and it got shot down. Right. Immediately. <laughs> Grambling anywhere it's been shot down hell with the canadian football league yeah. Uh, yeah. with the cleveland browns yeah. so i didn't know did, did did tcu have actually more oomph to handle the blowback than anybody else not with art not with kendall excuse me because he's been at florida state he's been at houston yeah. he's been at fau he's been at arkansas but they they have it for this particular hire and you know what they did they 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 feel like they've done enough due diligence mm -hmm. they feel strongly about it I asked this question yesterday to a writer at the Fort Worth Star Telegram and Stephen Johnson uh, when when I said that this was there a possibility and this is for you that if in fact they would have shot this down as great as everything is right now with TCU football and Sunny Dykes would that a would that have started some sort of an issue with that relationship? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. And I I think what happened though in just seeing how it unfolded was that TC that Sonny Dykes knew all along that he wanted Kendall Bryles. And so uh, I think what they did was they wanted the process to work itself out. They wanted the vetting process to go. They wanted they wanted to make sure that they had all the details, all the information, let him come on campus, folks need to know a little bit more about him. And then at that point, you know, because of the, the equity that Sonny Dykes had built up, the equity that Jeremiah Donati, the athletic director, has built up, uh, I, I think the chancellor then says, okay, I'm, these these men I pay to do their job, to go out and find the best guys here at TCU for the role that we need, and this is what they came back with, I'm going to trust their judgment on that. And to me, I say kudos to that, too, as far as the leadership position is concerned. You hire these guys to take care of business over there. You trust them. You know the kind of character that they have and who they hang out with. To me, that's what this is based on, is they say, you know what, I'm going to trust them. Uh, Sonny Dykes has earned that trust uh, with the year that he's had. And so, therefore, the deal gets done. Brian, I got to ask you a question, if you don't yeah. mind. Back when all hell was breaking loose, what did you think of Kendall Bryles and Baylor? You know, I had, yeah, it's a great question because we were all so influenced by Gary Patterson. Uh, and I'm just being candid with you. I, I was, I was one of those. And when you talk to coaches, I told you this the other day. When you talk to coaches, uh, to a man, they all speak highly of Kendall Bryles. Uh, uh, you know, coaches that did never coached with him, they coached against him to, you know, all these sorts of things. So I, I think I've learned a lot in this process about both Kendall and Art to be candid with you in the, in the entire situation. At Baylor. I, it, uh, that's why I keep going back to what Paul said, you know, that the university expected uh, football to do something. Football expected the university. How many times did we see that? And and, and, and all of a sudden it slips through the cracks. So I, I, I learned a lot through this process. I, hey, I, I want to give the guy a fair shake. I, I too, David, and like you, I, I, I believe in second chances. I believe in forgiveness. Uh, I believe in repentance, uh, you know, and I, and I think that, uh, you know, Kendall is deserving of that. So if he comes in here and he coaches football, he wins 50 games in five years like he's done the, uh, the last, uh, last five, uh, then I think all is well in the world. And, 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 uh, and then it ends up being a, a, a good, solid hire if he's a good, solid citizen, which every indication that I get from folks is he is that. And Brian, I do think you mentioned that because you're influenced by by Gary Patterson, you know, at the time, but you are, you're there working your, yeah. your, your relationship is with him. Uh, you know, from the other side, you know, it's, you know, the Bryles Patterson thing was, it was, it was explosive. Yeah. If you took all of the, all of the things that happened when art got fired out of it, if you just left it at that had the Bryle staff left of their own volition, which got close the year before when he almost went to Texas. So had they just gone to Texas eventually, which probably, you know, would have happened one day in the yeah. way it almost happened before. If they had just gone to Texas and left and then Kendall Bryles here in 2023 winds up being the offensive coordinator, um, people would still be mad because no they still wouldn't like the Bryles family because that was the rivalry. So yeah. you add the stuff that happened on top of it. 
and it just makes it worse. Um, I've always been of the belief that Art did, Art and Ian McCaw had to be, and Ken Starr all had to be let go because of there was a leadership failure all the way down and Art was eventually the leader. And what he never did and they never really did was say, do we have a problem? I never thought that would mean Art never again would be a head coach, but I did think the assistants deserve a chance, deserved a chance to prove themselves everywhere else. And they all have at every multiple, single one of them yep, at multiple yep, places. Yep, the, yep. Well, like Chris Acuff's been in the NFL, Phil Bennett's yep. been at, at several places. Jim Good, they've been all over the place. Yep. Jeff levy has been all over the place. They have proved themselves other places and i think that at some point you've got to let that all go i mean yeah, and and see what they're doing in the present as opposed to what happened in the past i do yeah, think I'm this and i don't know how tcu is going to handle this it's none of my business but uh i i do think and i don't know everyone that might have been involved or everyone that's been accused or uh, all of the stuff they all have to look every morning when they get up in the mirror they know whether or not they could have done something differently or maybe at least been, well, we shouldn't have just relied on somebody else. I think all everybody, I think all of us do that almost maybe day every day. day. All of us do, don't we? Absolutely. But I do wonder if whether or not they will have him in front of the media soon. And there needs to be the ability for people to ask any question that they want. Yeah. And I hope that Kendall handles it well. I know he'll be prepared for it. And that's probably one of the things that in the end, uh, a few months after Art was let go in 2016, they put him in front of uh, Paul, who was it? Tom Rinaldi on game day. Mm -hmm. And it was an absolute nightmare of an interview because yeah. not that, again, if you don't think you've done anything wrong, then you have, that's your deal. But there was like basically almost no remorse or accountability or even culpability. And that again, and you're talking art that. there. You're not talking, you're talking art there, right? Yeah. I'm talking yeah. that. My whole point is I think yeah. that's why I think it'll be important I don't want to see a guy out there if he doesn't want to be out there, but I think TCU making him available, how many questions they get about not just football, but also perhaps what Kendall has learned himself. If in fact, that's part, I think that'll help whether that happens or not remains to be seen. I'm anxious to see fellas. I appreciate the time today. Thanks for hopping on with us. You guys do amazing work. We always appreciate uh, getting together with you, the insight that you provide from down there. Look forward to seeing you. Hey, you guys got to come up here in Fort Worth when uh, Baylor travels in basketball. We'll take care of you. Hey, oh, yeah. uh, I know you had a long week too, Brian. By the way, thinking about you and the family. Thank uh, you. I know it's been a tough week, and uh, God bless you. Thanks for having us on and vice versa. Love All you, right. buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you, fellas. All right. Coming up next, Mac Engel and David Bowden are going to join us. We'll talk more about the Kendall Browns hire when we continue with Frogs today after this time out. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best-tasting, sugar-free kids' drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. For exclusive interviews and content on TCU Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime. It's your source for all things TCU. Only on frogstoday.com. Say hello to the water of tomorrow, Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain, refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water, and rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. Dave's Hot Chicken is a cult favorite and now has two locations in Fort Worth, Bryant Irvin Road on I-20 and Berry Street at TCU, both owned and operated by Horned Frogs. Mention the Frogs Today Show and get 10% off anytime and order online at daveshotchicken.com. For exclusive interviews and content on TCU Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime. It's your source for all things TCU, only on Frogs Today. Com. Say hello to the water of tomorrow, Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain, refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water, and rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. 
The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Back we come to the Flying Tea Club studios. Let's continue now to talk Kendall Bryles, the new offensive coordinator of the Horn Frogs. You just heard our conversation with the fellows down at 365 Sports uh, down in Waco, bringing two guys, experts of our own, Mac Engel, of course, with the Star Telegram. The Engel Angle uh, is a podcast that originates here as well at uh, Roxo Media House. And David Bowden, of course, uh, our coach on the scene here. Let's dive right into this. All right, first off, from a football perspective, Mac Engel writes in the Star Telegram, this is a good hire. Tell me why. I think if you're looking for a competent uh, offensive coordinator who has a lot of skins on the wall in Power 5 football, I, I don't know who else you were going you to find any better than Kendall. If you look at his track record and resume, whether it was at Baylor, Florida, Atlantic, Houston, Florida State, and Arkansas, that's, that's a string of big-time programs yeah. that he's coached at and had success at. So if you're looking at that part of it, that's that's a that's a no brain slam dunk hire. All right, we know Sonny Dykes' background offensively, obviously. Give me some sense as to how Kendall Bryles and his style fits into this, David. Yeah, well, I think I think Sonny's a guy that hires really good coaches and then trusts them to do their job. And, and so, one of his best attributes, in my opinion, is sort of being hands off in that area and game plan, and so he can manage the program and really address any needs of their players. And so, I think this is somewhere where I feel you know Kendall Brown is coming from a place where work for an offensive line guy, have a different philosophy there about getting a hat on a hat. Sonny will kind of take the chains off a little bit and allow him to increase tempo and do a little bit more of, of traditionally what you've seen from, from him offensively. Mac, when you write your piece, you, 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 uh, you expect to get emails from folks <laughs> on both sides, uh, generally when you write a column. Yeah. I, I'm assuming on this, when you heard from some folks who were disappointed yes. in, in this hire, how do you respond to that? And I, I don't mean specifically to individuals, but when, when people say, you didn't have to hire yep. Kendall Bryles. What's the yep. response there? Uh, I get why any athletic director, university president, or head coach says, I don't want any part of that PR machine. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is. The name Bryles in college football, or football in general, is basically the four-letter word. Right. that they. And I, I, can't, I can't blame if Jeremiah Donati, the TCU AD, said, I'm just not doing it. We, we can find somebody else. Go find somebody else. I'm just, I'm just not dealing with the emails because I know I got them. I'm not dealing with the phone calls because you I, I know we got them. Yeah. It's not worth it. We're not doing it. We can yeah. find another coach. I can't blame them. In terms of me, what I've told them, and I, I, no one with the exception of maybe three or four people, Brian, covered that topic more than I did. I agree with that. And I was very critical of that staff. Yes. I was very critical of that university. I was very critical of our Bryles. And I thought a lot of that criticism uh, was just and, and necessary, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Uh, there's probably four or five things I wish I could I could take back, and I can't. I have to own it. It's my name on it. Um, but having reviewed all of it and how and having reviewed new information as it came uh, available to me, I said to myself, um, all those guys got jobs, yeah, and tremendous mistakes and mishandling of sexual assault claims were were not just mishandled, butchered. Yeah, they were minimalized. Right. They were trivialized. And to say anything other than that is uh, is offensive. Th yeah. That happened. And I, you acknowledge all that. And and there are other parts of this conversation that in order to present a complete picture, you have to acknowledge. Uh, I would have fired all of them. If I'm, if I'm the president of that university, Brian, I'd be like, sorry, yeah. guys, got to go. Yeah. And, and if I'm another athletic director, I'm like, no, I'd, I'd hire this guy. I hired that guy. I'm on record. I, I would have hired Art Bryles for another job. Right, I, right. And so when Kendall got jobs at other places, he was vetted at Florida Atlantic. Mm -hmm. He was vetted at Florida State. Mm -hmm. He was vetted at Arkansas. None of these places, as badly as they, were, they want to win, right. were going to hire these guys with their eyes closed. Yeah. So they looked at it, and they saw enough to say, we can justify it. And, and if you look at, let's look at Kendall specifically. Since he left Baylor, as horrible and as messy as that was, and we're not even talking about the extra year, mm -hmm. 
that Bryles and that staff stayed on. I'm talking Kendall Bryles yeah. and that with staff, Grove, staff yeah. with, with Coach Groby after he left, uh, after Coach our, our, our Bryles left. Yeah. As horrible as that was, nothing happened. Yeah. Nothing has happened, and you have to acknowledge that. But I also understand in these situations, and, and it's, it's something as emotional as a sexual assault claim, especially multiple, where we've had all these headlines that there are going to be a lot of people, Brian, whose minds are made up, they're done, and they want no part of it in the story. David, I hope I'm not uh, giving away trade secrets here, but you, uh, <laughs> you, know, a lot, you know a lot of folks who know Kendall. Uh, you were a high school football coach where Kendall recruited your high school. So you've been around him a little bit. Um, what do you think of this hire from that standpoint, what, what you know about Kendall? Yeah, well, I, going back to the, the Baylor stuff, I'm not going to relitigate that, uh, uh, truthfully, because I'm not qualified right. to. Uh, I, I'll tell you, you asked me what my experience has been, and it's been nothing but, you know, top-notch, right? And that's what I'm, I'm basing basing things on. Um, so I, 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 it's tough for me to... To, to speak on any of that stuff down there, yeah. you know, because I, I just, I, I don't know enough, frankly. Right. Um, but I also, I know that they're good people, good yeah. family, um, from, from my experience. Right. I, I have nothing but positive things you, to say. You can't speak on this. In fact, all three of us can speak on this. All three of us have daughters. Um, would you have hired Kendall Browns? Yes. Yeah, for sure. That's all. That, I trust these men. You, you guys, uh, you, you, like you said, nobody's covered the story more than you. Yeah. You, you know people who know Kendall uh, as close as you can get to him, and, and for to hear you guys say that to me, that's that's part of the vetting process for me. Yeah. 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 It's. I mean, obviously, it, it is an emotional thing. I, I think sometimes, you know, you, you get things and, and you hear read headlines and, and see these things rock, but right. you know, when you start digging deeper and you start going up the level in terms of administration and things yeah. and, and the mishandling of it. Um, like Max said, I understand when you want a, a clean slate at that point and wipe everybody out. Yeah. I get that, right? You just have to do that and have a hit a full reset. But to hold that over someone's head, you know, for the rest of their lives, right. when they really don't know exactly, you know, know, how much or how little, you know, they might have known or been involved. Yeah. Um, There's no such thing as guilty by association necessarily. Either. No, and I, I've also seen, you know, as a, as a as a coach, I've been around other coaches, uh, and, I, and I know mm-hmm. all no disrespect, <laughs> Mac, but. You know, dude, this is never going to be good. Yeah, when everybody's, when everybody's, everybody's that, like, hey, I love you, but exactly. no, exactly. I, no but, disrespect. Or, but, we all know, or to be honest. It's right. never good one. No, you're right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no disrespect. No by disrespect. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, this guy's a clown. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> no, I, I, this, isn't, this is in general, though. For, yeah. You can't believe... I mean, you read a newspaper. I mean, you got to... <laughs> well, I mean, he, I mean, he, he, just, right? he just said there are three or four things that you would talk oh, about. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. There's, but there's, you know, you got to get clicks. You got to sell newspapers. You got to sell ads. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, things can be sort of, you know, spun in a, in a way that right. that satisfies that in, in readership. But the reality is when you start digging, these are real people. These are real lives. And again, in no way am I making them the major victim in this. We all know that. I think that's pretty redundant. But... Um, but at the same time, this, they, these people have families, they have lives, and I, I think at the root of it, they're really good people that um, you know made some mistakes. Uh, and I don't want to trivialize that. No, I know, I know. But uh, so that's my take. Uh, I struggled that one just because uh, I know. What does this say about a couple of things? What what does this hire say? One about Kendall Bryant's. He he knows there's a firestorm. Absolutely, he, he knows it. But but he's still willing to come to TCU, still willing to step, step into this role, still willing to go to work for Sonny Dykes. What, what does it say about him? I, I think I kind of admire that. Uh, well, I think it says a couple things. I, I, and you could speak to this a little bit closer, a little bit better than I could. It's my understanding that's a really tight family. Yeah. And, you know, Art Art never really wanted to leave Texas. Right. And he tried, and those jobs got pulled, basically, where there's a grambling, the job in the CFL. Right. I did go to Italy for a little bit, but that's a Texas family. That's a tech, Those are Texans. Yeah. And, you know, other than Houston... Uh, Kendall's lived out of the state for a while now, and I would imagine the opportunity to come back here uh, was too good to pass up. Yeah. It's a great job. It is a great job. And I think the other thing, too, is he knows better than anybody that this narrative, it's going to be red hot for 72, 96 hours. Right. And then it calms down. Yeah. And But here's the one tricky thing about it, Brian. You've been around college football longer than I have. You, we all know how this is going to go. If nothing happens, nothing happens, yeah. right? The, the offense does well. They win nine or ten games. Right. It's fine. Right. It's fine. 
Uh, I don't know if Kendall Bryles will ever be named a head coach someplace because of his last name. You think so? Maybe. I, I, I don't know. But I also know this. If something bad happens, there's an accusation, there's a headline. That's going to be an issue. Yeah, but you got to trust Sonny Dykes. You got to trust uh, this staff. Sure. You got to trust this athletic director to say, yep. "Hey, we we can do that's it. not going to happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen." Yep. But the bottom, you know, bottom line is, and this is, I might be stealing a line from Bowden here. If he hangs a hundred on on Prime uh, that Sunday, never comes up again, right? Yeah, it doesn't. But I also, not just the football <laughs> side of things. I, I think you know, you say you give credit, credit to Kendall, and we, I do for, in that aspect, but also to to Coach Dykes. And everyone says blind. I, I'm not saying blindly trust somebody. I don't think that's ever a healthy no, thing. No. But you know, when you, when you start looking back into his history with, you know, Spike Dice, Sonny's dad, yeah. and, and, and Art Briles and the relationship there. I mean, this is somebody who knows this family. Yeah. My impression is somewhat intimately. Right. Knows their so, DNA. That's right. And, yeah. and so I also give those guys credit. By those guys, I say Sonny Dice, Jeremiah Donati, yep. for for saying, hey, you know, we believe in this. We believe in our our process and our vetting process. Um, and we're confident. I trust the people that we've hired it, to, to make sure that this is the, the right fit you know, okay. for, our, for our university. All right. Good deal, guys. I appreciate the insight. Thanks, Here's a, hey, look, let me ask you one more question. And Bowden, won't, he, he won't care about this. How far will the Cowboys go? Do you really not care? I don't. See? <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Yeah. All right. Here it is. Take this to Vegas. Okay. All right. Okay. 49ers coming 49ers. up. Yeah. Uh, 49ers are going to win. Ooh. It's going to be painful. Okay. It's going to be excruciating. Yeah. There's going to be something that happens in that game yeah. where a Cowboys fan is going to want to take their phone, their tablet, hopefully nothing living, yeah. and want to launch it through their television set. They're going to take <laughs> the biggest pile of aluminum foil right. and put it in their mouth and yeah. chew on it and ask themselves, why did I do this to myself again? again. Why did I believe? Why did I do this to myself again? Yeah. These losers. Yeah. Uh, It'll be a fun game to watch, though. Yeah, yeah. Cowboys are going to lose. All right. Make sure you ask Jamie Plunkett the same question. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah, y'all know. The number one cheerleader. Yeah, we'll do that oh, coming boy. up next. Yes. In fact, he joins us next. We're going to be talking a little college baseball uh, with Jamie Plunkett. We'll do that as Frogs Today continues here after this time, man. For exclusive interviews and content on TC Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime. It's your source for all things TCU. Only on frogstoday.com. Dave's Hot Chicken is a cult favorite and now has two locations in Fort Worth, Bryant Irvin Road on I-20 and Berry Street at TCU, both owned and operated by Horned Frogs. Mention the Frogs Today show and get 10% off anytime and order online at daveshotchicken.com. Say hello to the water of tomorrow, Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain, refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water, and rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. All right, we promised you he would join us. Jamie Plunkett's in the Flying Tea Club studios now here. Cowboys win against the 49ers? Uh, probably not, but I'm going to get my hopes up. So. <laughs> exactly. Why, why, might as well if you're yeah, exactly. a Cowboy fan, right? Exactly. Uh, oddly enough, we want to talk a little college baseball. Uh, D1 Baseball came out with their preseason poll. Mm -hmm. Where are the Horn Frogs staying right now? Frogs sit at 15 yeah. in that poll. It feels about right for yeah. a team that's bringing back a lot of guys in the in the field and in the lineup, but trying to replace a couple arms on the weekend. So, you know, I think it's a it's a pretty good showing. Uh, just 15 in the preseason. You know, D1 is the industry standard, so it's nice to see them there. We had a casual conversation with uh, Coach Kirk Sarlos out in uh, Los we Angeles at the uh, uh, event we did for the Flying Tea Club, and uh, that conversation led him to talk about that pitching staff. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's got high hopes for this group. Well, there's no reason to not have high yeah. hopes. You know, you got Kansas transfer Ryan Vanderhey coming in. He showed a, a lot of really good stuff in the fall, pitching for the Frogs. His fastball is topping out at about 99 miles an hour. He's starting to rely more on his off-speed stuff, too, which when you're talking about high-end guys like that, the more that they start to rely on that secondary pitching, the more you're going to see those walk numbers drop. And that was one of his big struggles at Kansas was he was walking too many guys, leaving too many guys on base. If he can reduce that, he's going to turn out to be a pretty good Friday starter for the Frogs. Yeah, because he's going to get a lot more offense here exactly, than, he got, right. than he got at Kansas yeah. for sure. Uh, speaking of that, uh, I, I got the sense that during COVID as the roster sort of exploded, 
that that wasn't necessarily good for TCU. That some of the guys who hung around, you know, it was yeah. It, I, I don't. I, I want to say that the right way. Well, but sometimes there's a t- t- chance you need to move on, right? You know, it's hard when you've got a locker room that's got 18 year olds in it and 24 year olds yeah, in it, right. right? I mean, two two groups of people that are in really different life stages, and yeah. you know, if you're hanging on too long at the collegiate level because you just want to keep playing, that's probably not in the best interest of the program mm-hmm. some of the time too. And so I think it's really good as as all athletics kind of get back to that normal normal pre-COVID way of, of operating, uh, that the rosters are reduced a little bit more. You have more time to spend if you're a coach with those guys that are going to be contributors. You're going to develop kids a little bit better rather than trying to split your attention among so many guys. And I think for, for Sarlo specifically, because he's still so hands-on with the pitching staff, yeah. that that's going to be a really, really big improvement for him this year. The one thing that we did hear him talk about, though, that college baseball had kind of flipped a little bit. College baseball was always trying to stay young. Mm-hmm. Now college baseball is starting to try to get older, and this is a more veteran. There are some new faces, obviously. Sure. But still, this group will be more veteran than it was last year in key spots, right? Yeah, I mean, you talk about the core of this team, especially in the lineup. You're returning Braden Taylor who's arguably a top 10 player in college baseball for your third baseman. You're bringing in a couple guys, Austin Davis transferring in from West Virginia, Trey Richardson transferring in from Baylor, two guys that are going to start at right field and second base respectively for this team who have a couple seasons under their belt as well. And then, I mean, you're talking about Elijah Nunez, who's a really big glue guy for this team. David Bishop is added 20 pounds of muscle this offseason coming back for his sophomore year. Curtis Byrne behind the plate for another season. You've got a lot of veteran leadership on this roster. They don't need a ton of, you know, kind of micro coaching like younger players might, uh, which means that they're not going to get rattled as much. They're not going to, you know, have, they're going to be able to get out of slumps a little bit easier. And and they just generally, from a talent perspective, they're incredible as well. Very few thought Oklahoma would do what they did last Mm -hmm. year in the Big 12. Give me some sense as to where the Big 12 stacks up this year. No, I think you'll see some of the usual suspects at the top again, Oklahoma State, Texas, TCU. Oklahoma is is replacing a lot of guys this year so you might see a downturn from them although uh, their coach has got them playing at such a high level you know it might just be a reload instead of a a rebuild for Oklahoma and uh, you know it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the conference shakes out Kansas State Kansas uh, West Virginia and Baylor I was gonna say keep your eye on West Virginia we saw Randy Mazie last night at the basketball game Mm -hmm. Uh, he and his wife had a chance to catch up with them and he's 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 genuinely excited about what they have coming back at West Virginia, he thinks it's kind of a blue-collar lunch pail mm-hmm. group that he's high on. Well, I'm glad that he I'm glad that he feels that way, you yeah. know. And it would be nice to see West Virginia get up into the tournament. They've yeah. missed it just by the hair on their chin a couple yeah. times in the last few years. It would be nice to see them get in. Uh, you know, I, I think there's been that issue of. Okay, well, are we going to let in a sixth Big right. 12 team or a fourth ACC team? Kind of that debate that always happens around tournament time, and West Virginia's been on the short end of that stick a couple years in a row now. Speak, speaking of the hair on your chin, it's looking good, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. I think you trimmed it up a little bit. Thank there. you. All right. Uh, that's uh, Jamie Plunkett joining us. A little college baseball talk here on Frogs today. Uh, don't forget now, uh, you got uh, basketball coming up tomorrow, TCU at Kansas. Frogs are finally back at home next week, and you'll debut the new pregame show, right, coming up Absolutely. next week against Bingo, Oklahoma. Bingo Marriott and I are going to be live there on the scene at Schulmeyer. All right. Break down the Frogs. Look forward to that. All right, it's going to be a big week. Uh, thanks for joining us here on the Friday edition of Frogs today. For Mac Engel, David Bowden, thanks to our friends at uh, Sikkim 365 Sports, and for Jamie Plunkett, I'm Brian Estridge. Until we see you again, have yourself a great weekend. Roxo Media House.